Well, if ever there was a time to follow weather, I think it is now. And uh, we do have a very, very interesting situation going on away up within the 10 millibar level of the stratosphere over the pole. A sudden stratospheric warming looks imminent across um, the far north and well above our heads. It is what response that has down through the atmosphere over the next couple of weeks is going to be critical. But thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vogue's European Outlook. The two meter temperature anomalies for the month of February so far. So this is through the first nine days of the month. And it is quite the north-south split, not just across the UK, but across Europe overall. It's been a warm month across Scandinavia, Finland, Russia. And it has, in fact, been a pretty chilly month across the southern and central southeast part of Europe in particular has seen some bitterly cold temperatures temperatures in the minus 30s for example in Romania parts of Serbia and the uh, other southeastern Balkan region countries but um, so yeah there is a lot of things going on at the moment I believe personally speaking that the reason why we've seen the milder theme across more northern areas of the British Isles in recent times um, has been the positioning of the Manjulian oscillation along with the La Nina base state and also the reflection of the PNA, Pacific North America pattern, as well as the Eastern Pacific oscillation, the Western Pacific oscillation. And I believe that the, the primary driver in this winter overall has been the Pacific Ocean and the various teleconnections responding. So, of course, December, January, Scotland's seen a relatively cold winter, and then we've seen a, a dramatic turnaround uh, during the final 10 days of January. And really, since that, it has been very, very mild indeed. Temperatures uh, well above seasonal averages, and it really feels as if, you know, certainly up here in, in Rosshire, winter just disappeared. And, you know, up until now, anyway, we've hardly seen a frost actually which is which is pretty amazing actually for the first 10 days of the month and even going back to the, the final few days of uh, of january uh, there's been very very little in the way of anything cold but going back to the temperature normally for europe here actually southern portions of the uk has actually been close to average daytime temperatures slightly above but temperatures well below average during the overnight period and the consistency of hard frost has been pretty pretty impressive actually um, and it's going to be a very interesting when all said and done how this winter pans out in terms of frost days I think there's been parts of the north that's not recorded one frost this month so far while down across the south bar a couple of mornings it has been frosty across southern areas of the country but the important aspect, I believe, is that the Mangelan oscillation is now firmly in the models, whether it be the GFS Ensemble, the ECMWF, you know, the Canadian, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Met Office. Um, all these models are now starting to pick up on the Mangelan oscillation rotating through phases four and five and then back around into phases seven, eight, possibly one. The 7, 8, and 1 is more favourable for high latitude blocking. So in other words, a negative Arctic oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation, uh, this would certainly favour. doesn't guarantee. But when you coincide with what's going on high up within the stratosphere, the combination of the two could represent some very interesting things towards the very end of the month. And I have to keep emphasising this point, folks. Not all sudden stratospheric warmings produce cold weather for the UK and for Europe. I believe that um, you know we're close to a hundred percent chance now that the winds within the zonal uh, the zonal winds within the, the the stratosphere over the pole will reverse over the course of the next five days and then it's the response down through the column, down through the stratosphere, into the troposphere, and even at that, even with a tropospheric response which would not come until the very end of February, may I add, 
the chances are the biggest response is going to be during the month of, of March. And I'm becoming more and more confident that March is going to see a blocky, cold theme through March. And we could have repeat cold spells even lingering on into uh, you know, the middle, even the second half of the spring this year. But winter certainly across northern Europe, northern Britain has pulled back significantly. The cold is clinging on to more southern portions of the country. But with a nice strong, uh, you know, early February sun, we're seeing the response within the atmosphere. Temperatures recovering now uh, without any true uh, cold air mass in place. You really have to have a cold air mass in place to ma maintain chilly temperatures by daytime. The strength of the sun now increasing therefore we're getting a fight between winter and the increase in sun strength here we get a cold air mass in place you can still get well below freezing daytime temperatures we've seen that uh, in, in cold spells going by so it's trying to get down to the, the nitty-gritty of this overall situation here sun stratospheric warmings do not always produce cold weather they always act differently like a la nina el nino Whatever you, you, whatever driver you want to look at, nothing is distributed the same as the previous. And I think that's something that we need to also take into consideration. An interesting tweet here by Amy H. But, uh, Butler uh, talking about uh, the sun stress for woman. She's an expert in this field. If you don't already on your own Twitter, do give her a, a follow because uh, some of the stuff is very interesting. A little bit over my head, if I'm being honest, but nonetheless, very interesting. But um, shows the the response in the the um, the northern angular mode index here, indicating that we see the the sudden stratospheric warm developing here. And if you look through the column from one millibar all the way down to the surface here, a thousand millibars, you can see here that we do have that response, uh, that warming response filtering down through the column. And you notice this lag period here, uh, and that's very very important. You don't get that initial response of 10 millibars and all of a sudden it changes automatically. It takes a time, generally a two-week period, sometimes three weeks, to filter down through the atmosphere here. And uh, you can see the, uh, the, you know, the, the information that she goes on to show here. It doesn't look as if we have a split, but more a displacement of the polar vortex here. Another interesting tweet here by uh, James Peacock, based down on the outskirts of the New Forest in Hampshire, a beautiful part of the world. Despite a secondary warming complicating matters, because of course we don't have just the initial, we have a secondary wave of warmth that uh, follows the initial. Uh, the GFS is consistently predicting a slow downward propagation. In other words, a slow response from stratosphere down into the lower portion of the, the, the stratosphere downward propagation of the uh, of the northern angular mode following the SSW, which is typical for displacement type events. So in other words, we'll have quite a slow response down through the column. Start of any surface impacts, likely no sooner than the 23rd. Just happened to turn 40 actually on that day. Uh, yeah, getting old. <laughs> but wouldn't it be interesting actually if there was some sort of interesting event took place on my 40th birthday? Who knows? I don't know. But uh, certainly it's going to be an interesting one to follow here. So it says here, it goes on to say that here are a couple of more uh, displacement type SSW examples. 1987, the propagation to the surface didn't actually uh, you know, complete for two and a half weeks following the initial event, while it was three weeks after in 1989. So less than two weeks would be unusual here. So in other words, the response from you know, 10 millibars right down to the surface um, within a two-week period would be unusual. Uh, for that, I believe, the Mandarin oscillation will have to force a negative Arctic oscillation independently. And, of course, when you combine what's going on within the uh, Mandarin oscillation situation combined with the sun stratospheric warming, I think these two, hand-in-hand, hand, could certainly lead to some very fascinating things indeed when it comes to the pattern that we receive. And of course, remember what I've showed you, that, uh, that the models are seeing the response. 
and uh, that is quite interesting given the time frame as well remember so these models tend to have a hard time seeing two three weeks in advance but you know it's interesting nonetheless that they're picking up on a high latitude block pattern with potential cold so this is of course week one this is off the cfsv2 weeklies upcoming seven days we've got the big positive over the UK and Ireland, continuing to keep things very dry indeed here. Positive NAO signal as well, of course. Continue to see the positive NAO 17th through 24th of February. Some very little in the way of change, no real sign of any cold weather. But it's this period here, 24th of February through the 3rd of March, that's when we're starting to see changes taking place. Is that the response from stratosphere into the troposphere? Is it the response of the Mandrillon oscillation rotating into the colder phases? Who knows? But look at this here. Third through the 10th of March, we've got the positive now up towards Iceland here. I would like to see it a little bit further north, if I'm being honest, but you can see where the model is going to here. So this is, of course, the 10th through the 17th of March. Even more prominent, you notice here, towards the second half of March. Strong, positive, Greenland, Iceland, negative NAO signal with the trough focused over France, as you can see here. And that is going to, of course, away to week six. Interesting to see how that is showing that so far out here. So, like I say, there is, I know I keep repeating myself here, there is no guarantees of anything here, especially in the world of, of forecasting. But nonetheless, it is very, very interesting to see here where it's going. I would be very surprised, very surprised if we don't see something uh, in terms of interest in cold weather in the coming, you know, in the coming weeks. Really, this is the ECMWF weeklies here, by the way, off weatherbell.com, and you can see here what is going on. So, as we continue to play through the, the five hundred millibar geopotential height anomaly chart. Notice here, it's seen. I know this is only the European version, we're not seeing the Northern Hemisphere view, but no, notice it's seeing the same thing. There's the trough sliding underneath the building of pressure up towards Iceland here, and there you go. We've got the reversal taking place. This is the period 4th through the 11th of March. Let's have a look at the two meter temperature anomaly chart if I can find it. That is, and you can see what it's shown here. Nothing outrageously cold, if you notice, but nonetheless, it is seeing the cold. Remember, this is a period day 23 through 30, so it's a long way out, of course. And then as we play through the loop, it's indicating that the cold holds, if not strengthens, mid to late month. Now, the GFS indicating that the, the uh, Arctic Oscillation is to take a little bit of a, a, a dive down towards neutral then rise firmly into you know sigma two three above normal and then drop uh, down once again here but it's too early in the period for it to really pick up on any negative here but i'm very very optimistic i'm getting a little bit excited if i'm being honest about the potential of some very interesting cold weather to come in the next two to four six week period i think so like i've harped on time and time again if you haven't already done so hit that subscribe button I'm trying to show you the global view and why we get a certain type of weather pattern as opposed to we just get a certain type of weather pattern I'm showing you how the evolution materializes or potential materializing of the pattern and we'll watch this in reality so certainly a very fascinating time to follow weather so i do encourage you to stick it right here on my youtube channel check out marvelwindweather.com check out my february forecast the february forecast and um, it's leaning a lot warmer than i first anticipated that being said you know december january has been pretty decent not perfect but decent and um we'll wait and see what the rest of this month brings but certainly there's all to play for when it comes to the end game of winter. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Hopefully see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.